Hello everyone and welcome to, I guess, what you could consider a bit of an unboxing. Recently I bought a big bulk lot of laptops and well I'm going to be opening those today because I'm not quite sure what's in here and I'm as excited to find out as, well, as you are I suppose if you're watching this. There are seven laptops in here and when you do the math with the price of the lot, I only ended up paying about $7 per laptop. So, pretty great deal, kind of regardless of what's in here. Let's go ahead and start with our first box. Now these came in three separate cardboard boxes, and I opened all the boxes just to make sure that I would be showing you the right thing on camera. But I haven't actually looked at the laptops yet. So here is our first set, and these look pretty old. They're, they're pretty thick, pretty chunky. This one clearly wants some screen time, so... Oh wow, that's a beefy guy. We've got uh, two cooling fans, a floppy drive. It's from HP, so a consumer division, rather than a compact business notebook. I suppose that's your... No, that's not the hard drive, that's the battery. That's pretty funky. That's a weird little battery right there. There's our RAM, as is labeled. I suppose this is a dock connector under this rubber. Doesn't feel like it wants to come off and I don't want to force it. Now this is something I've never seen before. There's a hard drive logo right here. Sorry about that, forgot to charge my camera battery before recording, but here we are. As I was saying before it cut out, I've never seen a front mounted hard drive. I don't think there will actually, whoa, there's another. I don't think there will actually be a drive in here, but, <laughs> yeah, you can just put a hard drive in the front. That is really wonky. I have never seen that. No, it has three fans. One, two, and then three. There's one at the back here. So whatever is in here clearly gets very hot. And yes, okay, so that is a dot connector. This seems to be in pretty good shape. Wouldn't be surprised if this just works flawlessly. Uh, oh, 2.4 gigahertz Pentium 4. So that, yeah, that's why it needs so much cooling. Ooh. 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 Yeah. So clearly, that LCD is not going to be of much use. There's a lot of buttons here. I mean, of course, nice speakers. You've got a ton of little shortcut keys. And volume buttons on the side, which is funny. Wow. Yeah, there's just a lot of cooling here. Let's see. It's gonna give us any signs of life. these chargers that is officially Compaq branded. I wonder if it wants specifically, oh! Yeah, that did it. So we've got signs of life. It's doing something. It works, it lives. Uh, clearly does not live very well. It might still be wanting a higher wattage charger. This is 19 volts, 3.1 amps, so that's only about 60 watts. It requests a 90 watt on the back. So I have a feeling, whoa, I have a feeling that I just don't have the power adapter it wants. So again, just a, a little bit of an overview of the ports. So there's the battery, 
There's volume adjustment, headphone, microphone, DVD-ROM drive, USB, probably wouldn't be surprised if that's 1.1 actually. There's the 90 watt charger because it's a, an inefficient Pentium 4, two more USB, ethernet, probably 10100, combo keyboard and mouse PS2, serial VGA, that's not serial, that's parallel, excuse me. Uh, S video or TV out, there's one of the fans. Then, oh hey, Firewire, didn't see that before. Uh, wow, a very bent PCMCIA slot. I'd assume that's PCMCIA. Double height PCMCIA. I don't want to force it too hard and break the slot, so I will work on that later. I'm mainly excited about a floppy drive and a laptop. I have few with that. So let's go for our next quite old one. And, oh, well this looks pretty familiar. I have one almost identical to this. So this is another compact. This is a C300 model. Let me get this out of here. But this is a compact C300. Pretty sleek looking machine. DVD rewritable. So much newer. Headphone, microphone. Uh, Altec Lansing speakers. <laughs> Very bare on this side. It, it feels like there's a lot of space, but not a lot of ports. So you, you just get the two analog video out, probably 10100, two USB, and on the back, nothing. So this is probably a pretty low end one. Wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised if there's like a Pentium or something here. Even worse, this is a Celeron M. It's clean, it's in good condition though. And let me get that officially sanctioned compact charger back and uh, see if this works. Is that not the hole? It doesn't use that charger. Okay, it might use the thin yellow tip HP. It looks like it does. Seems to work. Yep, works fine. We've got a Celeron 430 at 1.73 uh, gigahertz. Up to 128 megs of video RAM with a total system memory of a gig and a half. So, is this Core 2 Duo generation? Or, I think this might be Core 2 Duo generation. Because I would not expect to see a gig and a half of RAM in like a Pentium 4 era or Pentium D era. Um, like Pentium M, etc. Okay, I was right the first time. The desktop, oh hey, the battery, the battery works. Well anyway, the desktop Celeron uh, 430 is socket 775, so I can only assume that the mobile one is a Core 2 Duo generation, so that's neat. So we've gotten one good working one so far, and well actually there's one more thing I wanna check. And that is what sort of hard drive does this use? I, I prefer to find SATA drives, of course, because those are easier to replace. Not at all the hard drive. I'd assume the memory here was upgraded after the fact. Maybe it came with one gigabyte from the factory, so that's two 512 meg sticks and someone added another uh, one gig stick. Good, it is SATA, so it does take a SATA hard drive. So this is a slightly newer machine in a bit of an older chassis. Good cooling on the chipset there. I commend them for that. Okay, so good laptop, glad. The Pentium 4 one, I am not so sure what I'm gonna do with that because A, I don't have the right charger to run it and B, I looked it up while I was looking up the Celeron and a replacement screen for that model is like 40 bucks. 
and I believe it has ATI Rage mobile graphics with 16, no, sorry, 64 megabytes of video memory. So it's a Pentium 4. It's not particularly efficient nor particularly high end. So I'm not quite sure what I'll do with that one, but the Compaq is certainly a nice find. Ooh, two more big ones here. Uh, we'll just go for this on the top. It looks like it's very large and it's black. This is a Dell Vostro. Never seen a Vostro before, actually. This is my uh, first time looking at one. This is a Vostro 1700, a 17 inch screen. The Vostro series was their, it was like their uh, higher than consumer, but lower than latitude range. So these were like lower end business laptops, I believe. Uh, not much to see here. USB, Ethernet, VGA, Firewire, uh, DVD rewritable, card reader, audio in and out, big buttons for multimedia here, wireless switch in the style of their early Core 2 Duo laptop, so I expect this to uh, have some older hardware. Good amount of USB ports on the back here. Let's see where, oh, holy shit, this is disgusting. God damn, this thing is filthy. Well, that's just really, <laughs> really gross. It's just absolutely revolting. I've seen worse, but like, come on. Okay. Yeah, it lives. Not a huge surprise. Let's see, what do we have? Okay, so it's the older Dell BIOS. Also, this machine smells really funky. Uh, early BIOS revision, so 2007. That's about when this machine would have come out, I suppose. Uh, 1.4 gigahertz Core 2 Duo. So uh, that processor is going straight on a shelf. I am not gonna use a 1.4 gigahertz processor. The only thing worse than a slow CPU in any laptop is a slow CPU in a big laptop, like 17 inches. They've labeled it as two gigs of RAM and 1.05 gigahertz actually. Um, lights are still on, so that means the battery is capable of holding some charge. So that's another good one. Okay, this next one is from the same box. This is XPS looking, or like a Inspiron. Okay, so it's an ins it's Inspiron, Inspiron, whatever. Same style as my XPS M1210 and 1710, so uh, let's see. Definitely an older machine. Now this is a beautiful chassis. I quite appreciate the reflective white plastic around the edges, and uh, I don't appreciate the decaying rubber that's leaving shit everywhere, but this is quite a pretty machine. Great multimedia features, it looks like. Let's, uh, let's check it out on the bottom. Missing the hard drive caddy, that's a shame. And it has one of the funky XPS batteries that cost like $88. Decent cooling, it looks like. I forgot to look at the cooling on that Vostro. Let's... Oh, it's actually really good. Vostro has a huge fan. Anyway, um, back to this Inspiron. Looks just fine. Good amount of ventilation. Looks like the RAM is under here. Okay, chargers on that side. PCMCIA. USB audio card reader 1394, more USB analog video, uh, some networking, and another DVD rewritable drive. Scoring big with the DVD rewritables today. I also don't have many laptops with a DVD rewriter. Most of them just have a DVD writer. But let's, let's go for it. Just go ahead and plug it in. Wow. So it's got Dell MediaDirect, uh, which was 
an interesting feature that I think maybe three people ever used. But let's let's head into the BIOS. Oh, you didn't even see that splash screen. Uh, BIOS revision of A14. The screen hinge is very loose. This is also a, an exceptionally glossy screen. It's not happy with the battery. It's blinking. Dim and discolored screen. This is a CCFL backlight. So that definitely means that the backlight is completely cooked. It's a nice looking screen though, and you know, seems like it could be upgraded reasonably. So this will be definitely one that I keep around. Neat machine. Oh God, okay. Well, one just fell out. This is, oh, oh, hello. Um, well, we have a, we have a nude Dell Latitude here, a Dell Latitude nude. This is an E5500. I actually already have one of these and I can't complain. It's a solid machine, it's well built, but this one is uh, very stripped down. And it may have come at the right time since my Dell Latitude E5500. God damn, <laughs> everything's falling today. My uh, E5500 actually is not wanting to charge. The charging port is a bit loose. So this one's not in the best shape. Might pull the CPU from it and uh, you know, maybe swap the charging port over to my other latitude that doesn't really charge correctly. Very corroded heatsink. That doesn't just happen, just on its own. Uh, what else? I mean, the E5500 is not a particularly fascinating machine. I, that's really all I have to say. Very bent serial port on that side. You know, I might as well, might as well fire it up. Seems like these came kind of standard with a two gigahertz T-series chip because that is what my other E5500 had from the factory. We're just gonna plug that in and bam, it works. I mean, unsurprising. Dells tend to be kind of unkillable. All right. It is a Toshiba. This is, looks like we've got a Celeron in this one. Not the biggest Toshiba fan. Oh, wow. This feels like it's brand new. Look at this. So, I mean, you could kind of tell it's, it's built like shit. I mean, it's really low quality. Kind of like just shitty and garbage and trash, as a lot of these Toshiba laptops tend to be, unfortunately. But it's in really great shape. It looks like it's never been used a day in its life. Honestly, if I had a Toshiba satellite, I wouldn't want to use it either. Oh, burn. Okay. Where is my charger? Let's fire it up. It's got a Celeron 900 at 2.2 gigahertz. So it's probably Core 2 Duo generation, judging from that sticker. Uh, F2, yes. Yeah. Celeron, awesome. It works. Cool. Another good one. This is our final one, so I hope it is not bad. This is... Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. I think this is the most smashed up of them all. I saved it for last. Holy shit. There's nothing that I can do with this laptop. So, first of all, it has an E2 processor which has to be on the list of the worst CPUs ever made. Uh, says it has a bad battery as well. At least this has DDR3 memory that I can salvage. Uh, and then this is, this is going straight to e-waste. <laughs> so we had some great ones. Pretty much all of the Dells worked fine. Uh, there was that one compact that was in great shape and one with the shattered screen. 
there were really only two out of the seven that I won't be able to do much with, that being the Pentium 4 Compact that was just absolutely destroyed, and the, um, well, this one right here, the, uh, the HP with the low-end AMD chip. I'll see if I can get it working enough just to run some benchmarks, because these are really shitty CPUs, and I'd love to add one to my benchmark table. But, yeah, I mean, even the pretty beat-up Latitude E5500 still seems like a pretty good deal. We got some that were just completely working fine, some that need some repair. Uh, so this was absolutely worth everything I paid for it, and not just for the fun of opening a box and finding things I like inside. But that is where I'm going to wrap up this video, so thank you everyone for watching. I hope this was entertaining, and I hope to see you next time.